Welcome to a well-designed business with your host, Luan Nigara. Luan has a lifetime of experience building a multi-million dollar business with her husband and cousin, and she knows the challenges you face in your interior design business. Luann brings you real-life answers to your most pressing problems, as well as practical strategies to explode your interior design business. So, let's get to the business of interior design. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of A Well-Designed Business and Power Talk Friday, and I have Fred Burns with me. Hi Fred, how are you? Good morning, Luann. I'm doing great. Thank you. Good. I'm so glad. I love it when you're on the show because I know that I need my pen and paper out. And I always tell everybody they need their pen and paper out when you're on the show. So if this is somebody's first time actually listening to Fred Burns on my show, I have to tell you this is probably your third or fourth appearance because you just bring the value. And I'm okay with anybody who brings a value. And that's what it is. It's episode number 22, number 4896. And this is your fourth time on the show, Fred. So yeah, right. So let me tell everybody a little bit about you just in case this is the first time they're joining a well-designed business and meeting you. So Fred Burns is the only interior design industry business coach and speaker who creates personal bios and other promotional materials for design professionals worldwide. Fred has more than 25 years experience training design professionals from Dallas to Dubai and creating their online profiles, website, and social media copy blogs, and marketing forms. In addition, he offers a wide range of business coaching services, including his high performance coaching program, his bio briefing, and his website once over. So today though, we're going to talk with Fred about the only. Why is the only word so important? And um, this is like tagged on to our design blogger series here. And Fred in the, Fred was a speaker at the design bloggers conference in LA in March. Um, In that program there, he talked about your bio briefing, how to create your bio. But I mentioned, Fred, in my presentation, and the only, what figuring out your only and why Fred says it's important. So here we're going to have just a, you know, a Power Talk Friday pulling this apart for us a little bit more. So Fred, talk to us about this only and why it's important for each of us to figure out our only. Well, I want to do so by beginning with a question for you, Luann. Um, when you Google interior designer Denver, how many entries do you suppose you come across? Mm, I would imagine many in Denver, big city, right? Right. I mean, there's probably, I mean, I don't, could there be a dozen, two dozen? I mean, there probably is five dozen, but maybe a dozen or two come up probably, right? When you Google interior designer Denver, you come up with 21 million entries. <laughs> 21 million entries. So okay. come on, there's a lot of competition out Wait, there. Wait, so here yeah. I am, like two dozen? <laughs> and that, by the way, frankly, two dozen. How many people was... are calling themselves interior designers today? It has never been easier to get elsewhere the design services that uh, you, you provide. That's the bad news. The good news is the one thing that separates you is you. Right and your staff. And um, that is why the word only is is so important. To be able to say you're the only design professional who is the best way to differentiate and distinguish yourself in this very, very crowded marketplace. And I want to tell you and I want to tell all the people listening to this that everyone uh, has his or her only. Uh, there's no one listening to this program who does not have an only. It's just a matter of pinpointing it and promoting it in a way that um, – uh, the, the people they need to know understand their value. And so this is the million dollar word, the million dollar marketing word that every design professional should embrace and memorize from the get go. So what is the deal with that, though? Because I've had this discussion because you and I have talked about this a little bit. And of course, as I said, I mentioned it in the design bloggers presentation. And I've had designers say to me, come on, well, like, how do I figure out my only? And I've I've learned from you in the last year and I say certain things, but here we have our guru in front of us. So when a designer you're working with, Fred, says, all right, but how do I know what my only is? How do I figure it out? How do you help them arrive at that? Well, you have to put your business and your career under a microscope and really dissect everything that makes you unique. And let me just give you some categories to consider as you try to pinpoint your only phrase. And again, by only phrase, I I, I mean to say 
Um, Susan Swanson is the area's only lead certified designer, for example, or, or um, Joe Smith is the area's uh, only kitchen and bath professional who has an accounting degree, something like that. That's what I mean by an only phrase. I call it the phrase that pays. But here are the categories to consider when you're trying to figure out what your only is. Um, awards and other honors. Are you the only uh, design professional in your area who's won a certain award or other honors? Um, are you the only one who has a design specialty in your area that, uh, that others do not? Uh, talk about your experience. Uh, how many years experience do you have and type of experience you have? It may very well be that you are the only one in your area who has that uh, extent of experience. Certainly accomplishments and achievements are unique to you. Uh, what are those accomplishments and achievements of which you're most proud? And that should be built into your only phrase. Your skills and capabilities. Can you do something? Can you offer something that no other design professional in your area does? And if so, you have a very powerful only statement right there. Other qualifications you may have uh, would be a, a category to think of. Unique products and services. Sometimes design professionals overlook the fact that they are the only one in their area who offers a certain type of product line or the only one who care, uh, uh, provides a certain type of, of service. Maybe you're the only design professional in your area who offers staging services, for example. Um, if so, then that is your only statement. Your publication history, where and how have you been published? So, some of our listeners have been published internationally, you know, in, in, in online uh, and, and print uh, media all around the world. And they very, very, they very well may be the only one in their areas who have this kind of distinction. So that certainly is worth mentioning. Your clients, please don't forget about who you serve and how you serve them. And are you the only one who works with a specific client niche in your area? Are, the, are you the only one with the resources that you have? In other words, are you the only one who works with certain vendors and contractors in your area? Um, that's certainly important. Your affiliations, perhaps you're the only um, member of ASID, NKBA, or some other organization in your area. And, and last and, and not least, your certifications and educational background. And again, you may be the only one in your area who's LEED certified, the only one who um, ha has uh, an educational background and aging in place, something along those lines. So there really are a lot of ways to figure out your only. And I, I know, especially if someone is too, it takes themselves for granted, which so many design professionals do, sometimes they overlook the possibilities. But uh, I, I cannot tell you how many ways you can distinguish yourself so you can really stand out in your marketplace. So I can follow you, Fred, with these different um, you know, ways to think about ourselves in different ways and to pull out things that we might be overlooking. But one of the things that I have had designers say back to me is, you know, the worry about, well, how true is it? Like, for instance, I'll use myself as an example. I would say that I'm pretty sure that I'm the one doing custom window treatments and awnings in the Livingston area for the longest, okay? Because <laughs> it's just, you know. Um, Even though you're only 21 years old. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, but the thing <laughs> is, um, the question is like, you know, do I, I mean, for me to blanket statement that, like I'm like, you know what's so funny is I'm a particular person that has a, a real, you know, thing with specific, um, I always have a hard time saying this word, specific, being specific. specific. How about we say it that yeah. way, right? right? And so what happens is, is I know that myself, I could make a really good educated guess that when I think about maybe the two or three people that are in my area that might do custom window treatments, I'm pretty sure that I'm older than them and have been doing it longer. But then when I turn around and want to put in print, or on my website, I am the only one that has been doing this since 1982 or something like that. Then it gets to be like my brain goes, well, do you know it to be true? Like, do I have to know it to be true? Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I have had designers say, well, I'm not the only lead designer. I don't know if I'm the only lead designer. And they wonder how big of a pool do we have to be talking about in order to not be, you know, lying? <laughs> like, you know, this is the right. one thing, Fred, that people come back to me and say when I discuss you, how you've taught us over the last year and the most common question i get when i speak at design conferences around the world is how do you know you're the only right that, right that's pretty <laughs> intriguing and here's what, how i answer that question and here's how i'll answer your question luann 
uh, you do your due diligence. You uh, check out websites. You, you uh, review as much information as you can about your competitors in your area. And once you feel as if you've done all you can, and, and uh, you basically put it out there. You know, you put a, you make it. And let somebody part. call you up and say, you know what? <laughs> well, funny you should mention that because there, contrary to what you may think, there is no only police. Right. There is no one who's going to come knocking on your door at five o'clock and say, hey, Luann, you, you used your word only. And, you are uh, so not the not oldest, test. craziest lady in window treatments in Livingston. <laughs> I would say this, that if for some reason you are called on it, then you certainly can m- m- modify and change it. And we'll talk about how to modify your only statement uh, a right. little bit later on. But um, in, in nearly 30 years of working with design professionals at this point, I have never heard of a designer who uh, was called on this. I, I, once they adopted an only statement, I've never heard of anyone right. having to change it. Right. But it could happen. Yeah, It could happen. In which case, you simply modify it. Maybe you say you're the only Livingston-based kitchen and bath <laughs> professional. Or, right. or you're, you're the only uh, designer in your area with 25 years experience who. So you, uh, you you modify it somewhat, uh, so you'll feel more comfortable doing it. But again, it, it as as crazy as it sounds, perhaps this is not something which comes up. And uh, and I would say to you that if, if this is what's holding you back, again, do your homework, check out your competitors, maybe ask some of your contractors and vendors uh, uh, just to make sure. And then when you feel as if you've done as much research as you could about your your um, your competitors in your area, then go ahead and start promoting yourself as the only one. And uh, I, I think you'll find that the benefits of having this distinction will far outweigh any kind of uncertainty you may have. Mm. I mean, one of the things that I like is when you use the example, you know, Joe Smith is the only kitchen area designer with a degree in finance or whatever it was that you said, because I think that that actually, I like that. It, it says that, you know, it implies that he's a businessman, that he, he handles his finances, that he is, pro- you know, I feel like as a consumer, I could look at that and say, oh, so I can have an expectation that this guy isn't going to be loosey goosey with the monies. Do you know what I mean? And that yeah. is non debatable. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, right. if, if he has a finance degree and he's a kitchen guy, what are, you know, that's, you know, I guess it still could be checked out. But, um, you know, it's it just when you get to the broader things, it's it's tougher. But I mean, even like if a designer has participated in a show house, I mean, um, if she just looks and says the only one in her town, of course, a show house is going to gr- grab designers from all over the area. But usually they're not exactly in your same town. And you're saying that that has benefits. So say there's a show house, there's 25 designers involved, and maybe every single designer in every town that borders you participated, but you're the only one in your town. You would describe that as a good only sentence? The yes. only Okay. Again, you're the only Livingston-based designer who participated in the show house. Right. One of the words I like a lot with only is the word specialize. You know, uh, you're the only kitchen and bath professional who specializes in in – uh, again, aging in place or something like that, or right, specialized right, in, right. In, um, in, in working with commercial clients, or, et cetera. And, or it, it, some people say it specializes as extensively or specializes to, the, to the, this degree. Right. And that's a, a way, again, to differentiate yourself. And, and that's what this is all about. You know, I, I call only, the word only is your ultimate differentiator. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's many things. You, your only is your, 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 your branding phrase. Your only is your, um, your, your buzz builder. Mm. Your only is your fee and price uh, justifier. If you want to raise your prices, the way to do that is talk about the fact you're the only designer who offers such and such a service. And, uh, but most importantly, your only is your ultimate differentiator. I mean, um, tell me what only you do and I will buy only from you. Right, 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 right. And I think that um, sometimes designers get hung up on it being a big thing. And what you're really describing this entire conversation is, is it doesn't need to be a big thing. It doesn't need to be the A, you know, this designer was in the AD. It's like, no, it's, it's little like when you said only Livingston, when even just the show house example, again, to go back to that, I could see a designer thinking, well, that's just a ridiculous statement. There were 50 designers in that show house. Why would I even bother saying I was the only one in Livingston? But the reality is, is that you, if you were, you were right. It doesn't, you know, but I could see a designer minimizing it. In other words, do you know what I'm saying? 
Right. And uh, by doing so, they end up leaving money on the table. Right. And so talk about that, because when you start to create some brand awareness of the as the only designer that this and that and the other thing that correlates to like you just started to talk about the fees and what you charge for the fees, because you elevate yourself as a, a little above the others, a little bit more expert. And therefore, you can you know, you can get away with charging X amount of dollars more per hour or flat fee more, whatever. Right. Right, and the word only is the what I, I consider to be the best price objection protection that a designer has. Mm. Because if someone raises objections about their price, and by the way, that comes up a lot, I realize, and and I think some designers would rather swallow formaldehyde than face price objections. Which makes sense. <laughs> but anyway, if it comes up, you have to say, uh, if they say so-and-so charges less than you do, uh, your response is, we have to understand I'm the only designer in this area who specializes. I'm the only designer with 25 years experience. I'm the only designer in this area who has worked with 700 clients or whatever. And that makes gets them to understand. And, you know, one of the things I do a lot as a copywriter for designers, I help them with rate hike letters, usually a couple times, uh, 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 or usually in January is the time we do that. But we compose an email letter to all their clients talking about the fact that they're raising their fees. And what we do to minimize the objections to that is we enclose a, a copy of their bio, which includes all sorts of onlys. You know, I've, I've written their bio and the, and the bio is filled with onlys. And then the people get it. And, and then the, the pushback, the, the, the feedback is, is positive. The pushback is minimal. And they're able to seamlessly... Uh, set and get higher fees because they've distinguished themselves by using uh, and promoting the word only in the bio, which is attached to the rate hike letter. Mm -hmm. So um, it is definitely a way to set yourself apart and and justify your higher fees. And um, once you educate people as to your value, then you'll be surprised how little resistance you get when you uh, uh, charge top dollar in, as a designer. Right. Well, I think, too, one of the things that um – people overlook is the way to spin what their situation is. So if you take two sides of a coin, right? So if you have one designer in an area who's going to say, look, I'm the only designer in the area that has three full-time design assistants on staff, a, you know, Love project it. manager, yada, 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 right? So that's a, that's, that's a, that's a value. Then on the other side, you could, I could see the solo in the area saying, you know, look, I'm the only one here that has, that runs my business myself. I do everything. I oversee everything. Nothing is, you know, set out to an assistant, right? I mean, so it's like you can make both sides sound fabulous. Of course, we all can. know that everyone would rather have an assistant, but if you don't, you could just talk about how I only take one project at a time because I do everything for that project. Everything I, I have my eyeballs on, Right. Yeah, without question. And you can talk about your personalized, customized service. You're the only one who uh, uh, oversees the project from beginning, beginning to end or whatever. And as you say, promote the fact that you have total control of the business. Yeah. I mean, you might really aspire to have three design assistants, but until you have them, work it to your favor and, and explain it in a way that it's a plus, right? Yeah. So. And I would encourage, by the way, uh, before I forget this, I wanted to interject this. Uh, in our conversation. And that is, uh, I would encourage the designers listening to this program to, to highlight rather than hide their past when they're trying to come up with their only. Um, and I'll give you an example. I was doing a, a, a bio for a, a California designer who was just starting out. And I was saying, well, so what did you do before you, I, I know you're new to design. I know you don't have much background. You don't have a portfolio yet. And you just got out of school. But what did you used to do? And she said, well, I don't really talk about it much. You know, I, I, it's, it's not really relevant to design. But I persisted. I said, so what did you used to do? Well, I was the marketing director for HP for 25 years. I traveled around the world as the marketing director. And I said, that's your only. Mm -hmm. So when we created her bio, we talked about how the fact she was the only California designer uh, with this kind of corporate America experience. And guess what? She started attracting all sorts of uh, CEOs and Fortune 500 executives. Mm -hmm and high-tech officials because they felt comfortable with the fact that she had this background. And that and she could talk their language. Spoke their language, absolutely. So um, what did you, if, 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 when all else fails, think in terms of your past 
and highlight that past. And, and most importantly, think about the benefits your clients today get from the fact that you uh, were involved working with uh, in an in administrative capacity or um, were uh, headed another company or whatever. What are the benefits they gain from that? And then you can talk about the fact you're the only one with this uh, extensive experience in, um, in in coaching or consultation or or um, financial matters or whatever. So um, that's a, a case where you can easily come up with your only simply by identifying what you used to do. Exactly. You know, we recently had a program with um, Karina from uh, Superior Interiors in um, Karina uh, Jones from Superior Interiors in Charlotte, and she was a teacher. She was an educator. She has a communications degree, an education degree, and she, you know, talked on the show about how she feels that she goes through her process just a little differently, a little bit more in detail, a little bit more in depth. And she almost strives to explain everything in such a way that if the client were to want to do another room that they would never have called her another designer for on their own, that they have some skills now to go ahead, do it because she's explained the why and the how of her decisions. Because being a teacher, that's what's so her passion that's her natural to her so she needs to talk about that in her marketing right that she comes from education and and teaching background what are the benefits her client her design clients get today from her teaching background oh so that's a good key her the benefits the benefits of working with me are you really are going to understand the process and the principles and the reasons for my decisions you'll come out yes Yes. that's the way to describe it talk in the red the talk in the solutions that it creates for the client Right. Okay. But, you know, we, we've been talking a lot of in, in more general terms. I want to give some specific examples of only statements to assure people that uh, there are a lot of possibilities. Um, if you go to my website, which is interiordesignbusiness.net, interiordesignbusiness.net, there is a publication that I make available among the educational tools called, called the Big Splash Little Cash Marketing Manual. Hmm. And it's a whole a chapter in that uh, Big Splash Little Cash Marketing Manual on only statements. And, and let me just give you some examples of uh, what it what it includes, uh, the region's only award-winning international. I'm sorry, the region's only award-winning interior architectural firm specializing in green and universal design. Mm. Um, the only real estate stager with experience with both residential and commercial interiors in northern Michigan. Uh, the only award-winning firm in Canada with over 40 professionals dedicated solely to the practice of interior design. The only interior design designer in Florida known for residential and commercial design of spaces specifically used for ch- by children. The only design firm specializing in both architectural detailing and interior design in the Edmonton metropolitan area. The only local window fashion professional who specializes in assisted living facilities in Mexico City. The only full service design firm with experience designing country clubs and spas throughout the southeast. The area's only home stager with a degree in landscape architecture. The area's only lead certified design and architecture company. And finally, um, the only company which provides Technion furniture to offices in the Milwaukee metropolitan area. So that's just a, a handful of, of the many possibilities here. But when you, when, you, when you listen to those, you'll realize that this is not rocket science. This mm. is not brain surgery. These, it's just a matter of looking at your business putting your business under a microscope and figuring out what, what is the nugget? What, what is it that you offer that no one else does? Right. And I think that's really the key in all the conversations I've had is that when you think about yourself to really just drill all the way down to the tiniest things that make you you, because it, it's like, you know, something so closely that you don't even see the differences do you know you know what i'm saying it's like we make it a bigger thing like we're looking for that big the only designer on hgtv it's like no it's not that big thing it's a little 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 thing you know um i've talked about debbie pinelli on the show before too because similar to the example that you made. She comes from a corporate background and she speaks their language, the language of working mothers, you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, and and we, I had an interview one day this week that um, she said that what she really identifies with is um, single women, professional corporate with no children. And she said, because that's what she is. And, you know, she talks their language and she knows what they need. And so there's a way to put that into your 
um, branding. And so where do we use this only word? We use it on, our, on our, where do we use it? We use it on our bow page. We use it on every page. Where do we use this only word? <laughs> you use it as uh, wherever and whenever you can, actually. Uh, most prominently, you use it in your bios. Uh, your bios. I'll give you a couple of examples of lead statements with only statements in just a second. Okay. But in your social media, uh, in, in your blogging, uh, in the about the author section, whenever you write something, that's when the only statement comes up. So that's a really good place to be thinking about where to use it and when to use it. And basically in all, in all of your marketing and uh, in your client communication, and uh, you always want to have uh, your email signature, that kind of thing. Whenever you dis describe yourself, your branding phrase, your elevator statement should include the word only. Okay. And, Again, I, we, you and I have talked about bios being the most vital and versatile and valuable tool for design professionals. I just want to read three examples of the first paragraphs of bios to give uh, our listeners an idea how they can incorporate this powerful word into their uh, personal promotion profiles, both not just uh, on their website and their house sites, but also in their social media. Okay. Uh, Gina Morrison, one of America's most versatile and multi-talented design professionals, is Montana's only luxury custom kitchen design specialist with 40 years experience. Mm. Um, Heidi Sawatsky is the only award-winning interior designer who specializes in helping St. Louis financial professionals and other prominent clients enhance the beauty and value of their homes. And one last example, uh, uh, Michelle Lauer, the area's only interior designer whose work has been published internationally, is widely recognized for her luxury residential design expertise and her extraordinary custom furniture designs. So, hmm. If you can incorporate, and you can, by the way, but uh, incorporating your only statement in your bio, in the first paragraph of your bio, really has an impact. Talk about making an instant impact. Talk about making yourself memorable. Right. This is how you do it, right. uh, by incorporating your only statement. And um, again, I would suggest the one easy way to think about this is ask yourself this. What do you offer? What do you do? Uh, and how do you provide design services in a way that no one else does? And is that your only, you know, that right, might be a way. Right, right, right. So, I mean, it even could just be a way you handle a project, the steps or the, you know, the only in, you know, area designer that has a customized five-step project, you know, you know, whatever, planner or something, you know what I'm saying? The only, the only one offering 3D imagery, maybe. You know? Okay, okay, um, right. Do it, you know? And then talk about like the people that are just coming out of school. That was a great suggestion how you talked, but that was a particular person that has 25 years experience from another industry. What about the interior designer who maybe has graduated two years ago, has just spent a year or two working at another firm and is, you know, opening up and putting their shingle out? What, what, are, what kinds of things could be there only? Well, again, we want to look at their background, where they came from, you know, and, and uh, if they had a work history before they began their design career. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the, 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 edu the education they received, did they, did they do an internship overseas or something that uh, uh, I, I was coaching a designer in Vietnam who had just come back from Florence, Italy. And so uh, we promoted the fact that she was the only one who's, who had this training, the only one in her area who had this training in, uh, in Italy. Um, so now that would be likely in Vietnam, but it's not likely that somebody in like a major city here wouldn't have spent a semester abroad. Is there a way to tweak that to put include wonder, in there uh, that in you semester abroad? Were you did you get involved with a project, especially a unique project, a commercial project of some kind oh, okay. that really sets you apart? You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. even if it gets down to the courses you took. I was uh, just going to say, is there a way to take into it? Like, because what I would feel is. One of the advantages that a newly graduated designer could capitalize on is the fact that they are the the most up to date on probably all the technology that relates yeah. to the field. So, ha but let's but say, they're no different than the other fifty people that graduated. So, how do you talk well, about let's that? Let's say you, you took a several courses and became especially interested in green design, for mm -hmm, example, mm -hmm. um, and then you you. you 
point out the fact in your in your uh, promotional materials, you're the only area designer who specializes to such an extensive degree in green design. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, that might be a little bit harder to to, to spell out. But, um, you know, I don't think necessarily you have to have a work history to back yourself up. If you if this is something you researched over the over a period of time, if you take a lot of courses in it, you are a specialist. And, and, and I, you know, uh, one of the things I offer is something called a victory vocabulary, which is 75 words that design professionals should choose to use to describe themselves. And, of course, prominently displayed is the word only. But there are other words as well. And one of the words on there is the word expert. You know, and if you look okay. in the dictionary, if there, still, if there is still such a thing as a dictionary, <laughs> under the word expert, you'll see the definition skilled person. Right. So uh, everyone can call themselves experts, you know. And, and, so what um, we're saying is that if someone has just come out of school and they have a particular interest in, um, you know, say hospitality design, even if they just open their firm, what we're explaining is, is that you specialize in hospitality design. <laughs> you, know, yes. you know, you might have not one client yet, but you've right. done more work in that field in your education and in your internships than in other parts of the field. And that's what your focus is going to be. So you are an expert in hospitality design. Boom, slam dunk, you're done. Stop, There's right? There's lost traction here, Luann. <laughs> I mean, I was working with a Boston designer who had never done any work outside of the state. And her big thing is she wanted to be international. She wanted to uh, expand her commercial design practice all over the world. And guess what? Guess how we started promoting her? You know, we promoted her as a design professional who's expanding her services and working to work with clients all over the world. And and now she's one of the most successful international uh, Boston-based designers around because of that. She just so, announced that that was what she was doing. She hadn't done it yet, <laughs> right? That's I, what you're I, saying. Absolutely. And, and uh, one of the reasons when I write bios and other promotional copy, I suggest that designers use uh, m mention the types of clients they work with is because of the law of attraction. In other words, uh, again, the CEOs, the Fortune 500 company executives, the doctors, the lawyers, the celebrities, if these are the kind of clients you, you want to work with, then put those in, in your promotional materials, you know, about how, how you specialize in working with them. You may not be there yet. But guess what? Once you start getting the word out, you're going to attract those kind of outcomes. It right. is really interesting. And um, is this fake it till you make it? Well, maybe. That, that, that could be it. But it, it sure beats the alternative, you know? Well, and, it, and the truth is, though, that, I mean, yes and no on fake it till you make it. Because if you are a new designer who has spent extra time and effort to learn a particular niche of the industry, you know, like you said, they are expert at it. They might not be as versed as somebody who's doing it 25 years, but they're going to be more versed than a, an, a, a regular client that's never had one minute of education in it. So it's, you know, you don't want to, we're not encouraging anybody to go out there and take on a project that they're not capable of doing. No. But the fact is is that you know what we also say on the program is that if you're a brand new designer you should be networking and you should be meeting your colleagues because if your branding and if your marketing brings in a project that's a dream project but you recognize that it might be a little bit above what you're able to do at that point from a project management standpoint then we've said before on the program reach out to a, a colleague and say could we partner on this what could we do that I could access what you know and of course I'm walking you into this job and so there are ways if your marketing is so darn good that you get a job you're not quite ready for, you know, to handle it, you know, there, right? I, I, one of my discoveries after all these years of going around the world speaking to design groups is that the most financially successful designers, Luann, without question, are not necessarily the best designers. You know, right. they don't have the most That's degrees the necessarily. They haven't won the most awards. They, they, ne they haven't necessarily been uh, uh, featured in the most publications. The most financially successful Design professionals are the best marketers, the best right. sell promoters, the best personal salesmen and the best personal saleswomen. And, the, and the, they're the ones most likely to, to be able to share with you their only statement because they are so skilled at this. Right. And um, I wanted to add a quick aside that I, I always thought was interesting. You know, this, this powerful, magnificent million dollar marketing word called only, it can be misused. Mm. You know, uh, years ago, I was uh, I was just starting out and I had a new book out called Sell Yourself, 501 Ways to Get Them to Buy from You. And I was on a book tour and I was speaking to uh, a group in Atlanta, just a general audience. And somebody came out to me afterwards, virtually on the, uh, about to cry. I mean, she she was so uh, looked so devastated, so sad. And she said, Mr. Burns, I enjoyed your talk. It's, it's just too bad that nothing you said really applies to me. What? 
And I, I was shocked. I, I felt so badly. I said, what do you mean? I, what are you saying? She says, well, she said, I'm only an interior designer. I, I don't have any marketing background or branding back. I'm only an interior designer. And I said, ma'am, I think you have that backwards. Right. <laughs> don't tell me you're only an interior designer. Begin that sentence by saying, I'm the only interior designer who. Right. That's powerful marketing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because that was a mixed crowd, the, the Sell Yourself book. And so just oh, yeah, the said it was a designer, and she thought that wasn't special enough. And as maybe, a matter of fact, that was my introduction to interior designers. That's that, when you made the that, crossover and niched? Shortly thereafter. Started to. After that one-on-one -on -one with that, that poor lady, I, I uh, was, was motivated, I guess, to, to niche in this industry. Yes. Yeah. So, Interesting. I mean, so what else? Is there anything else that we need to think about when we're um, crafting our only and, and really – you know, having a little heart to heart with ourselves and coming up with what it is. And I just keep hammering to my, to, you know, hammering back. It's, it's a little detail. There's a little detail about each of us that makes us different. And in, in window works, I'll say a lot of times we, when, you know, always we present it when at some point during the sales presentation, but when it comes down to it, one of the things I, I really hammer home is we are the only window treatment, uh, window treatment professional and awning professional in the area that has our own installation staff. And yeah. that's huge. That is right. huge. I mean, because that is something that, you know, on one hand, it might seem like a little thing. But on the other hand, I know as a consumer, when I look in your face and I say, my employee is going to show up here, he is going to have a window work shirt on. You're not going to wonder <laughs> if where he came from and does he do this for a living? And then next week, is he laying carpet? And this week, he's putting blinds up. It's like, uh uh, he does this for a living. And so yeah. that carries a lot of weight for people. You know, right. Well, only uh, does carry a lot of weight. And um, I, I want to let people know that it's not only is not the only powerful personal promotion word. I mean, I like words like first and newest and oldest and exclusive and those kind of things. Um, it's just the best word, I think. And I, I want to assure people again that everyone listening to this program has an only. And uh, what I always say is that um, to again, to bring this point home and tell me what only you do and I'll buy only from you. Mm. And I, I tell people, give me 30 minutes and I will give you your only. And not only that, I'll give you a, an entire uh, promotional campaign you can build around uh, communicating your only. And as a matter of fact, I, I do this in a, in a session called the bio briefing. Uh, I do a, a 30 minute discussion with people and we, we pinpoint their only and we come up with strategies they can use, not just in their bio, but in all their marketing to really brand themselves in a way that's unique in their area. So if, if our listeners are interested in that, uh, go to biobriefing.com, B-I-O-B-R-I-E-F-I-N-G.com, and they can um, sign up for that. And if you want to reach, if they want to reach me, Luann, I, I'm uh, at 303-589-3013, 303-589-3013. And my website is interiordesignbusiness.net interiordesignbusiness.net. It's awesome, Fred. And I have to say, you and I did the bio briefing and I really, I, I, I had my eyes opened. I really, <laughs> I remember we started the conversation. You're like, okay, so, you know, what, what's different about you? I'm like, Fred, I don't think there's anything different about yeah. me. <laughs> and by the time we hung up, I was like, well, okay. <laughs> so I'll, I'll tell you one thing different about you, Luann. You, you happen to be the hostess of the most amazing <laughs> podcast in America. That, that, that's what your only is. You're the only one. I know. I've started to use the hashtag podcast queen if you've noticed <laughs> podcast queen podcast princess whatever you want to call yourself you are a rock star and, thank and you podcast is so amazing. Oh, no no I, I appreciate it but i am really just testifying to the fact that you really do have a particular skill in extracting from us what our only is and i i highly recommend the bio briefing to anybody that is sitting there thinking i still don't get it i don't have it only because Fred will help you figure out what it is. It's for sure. <laughs> Everyone has one. Believe me. <laughs> yes, I, I agree. Well, I'll thank you so much, Fred, for coming on the show again. I always love it. I, I like I said, you have to. I'm. I I've know a lot of what you're talking about at this point because we've talked so often but i still have an entire paper f paper filled with notes from this conversation <laughs> so thank you so much i hope you have a great day thank you so much it was a total delight Lord.
Thank you for joining me again today for another episode of A Well-Designed Business. This podcast is a production of Window Works in Livingston, New Jersey, your trade resource for custom window treatments and awnings. Learn more about Window Works at www.windowworks-nj.com. All of our music is original music by Room 2 Productions. Please contact us if you want to learn more about original music for your business or your events. Music.